Bog is bunts and bean. One fat, one short, one lean. These horrible crooks, so different in looks, were nonetheless equally mean. Hi, this is Karen. And this is Nancy. And you're listening to a very special Kids Momo Mo, where we give you Mo Kids Momo. Recently, Nancy and I went to see the new Fantastic Mr. Fox movie, which is, of course, based on the classic children's book by Roald Dahl. And here's our take. The book in the movie is about Mr. Fox and how he basically steals from the farmers in his neighborhood. It's dealt a little differently in the book versus the movie, but he's essentially just trying to survive and feed his family. But these three farmers who are horrible people are trying to kill him. And the three farmers are named Bogus, Bunce, and Bean. And you may have heard their names sung very beautifully and operatically <laughs> by me and Nancy in our intro to this Kids Momomo segment. Um, and that's the song that the neighborhood children sing about the farmers because they are so mean. And we try to replicate the beautiful sounds of the soundtrack from the movie. <laughs> you can judge whether we were successful or not. So I really like this movie and I would recommend it to anybody I know to watch it. Um, especially fans of the book. Yeah, me too. Um, yay! I liked yay, it. <laughs> what was your favorite part? So in the movie, um, the animals are all dressed in clothes and they're very civilized mm -hmm. and they speak very proper English. But what I love is that when they sit down at the dinner table and they start eating, they just go rah, 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 and they just like <laughs> chow down. And it's so awesome. And the first time, the first scene that you see this happen when Mr. Fox is eating breakfast, it's like totally awesome. Yeah, I love that scene. The thing that was so funny was that Mrs. Fox had spent so much time preparing this <laughs> right. meal that looked to me like French toast or something. So she's like battering the toast and like frying it up. And then she like placed it nicely on this dish and presented it to him. And then it was just like, Nancy, would you do the honors? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I really, <laughs> because it's the podcast, you can't see it, but I'm also making like the hand gestures too. Yeah. And I really wish I could eat French toast like that, but I can't. I don't know, you should see me when I'm at home in my own apartment. <laughs> but anyway, that kind of is similar to my favorite part of the movie, which is the way that they dig. So as Nancy said, they're very civilized in their clothes and they look kind of like almost human uh, mm -hmm. with the way they interact with each other. Like they stand upright rather than walking mm -hmm. like normal animals. Um, but then when it comes to digging through the earth, then they're just like, well, you can't see it, but I'm like moving my arms in this crazy <laughs> motion. Um, and it's just like rocks are just like flying everywhere. Right. They and it, really messy. And yeah, it just, it, and, and it, but it also looks like super fakey because it's stop motion. <laughs> so it's like they're not even touching the earth, but the rocks are just like flying. I don't know. There's just something that's hilarious about it. And I do believe everyone in the theater totally cracked up at that part. I also want to point out that digging, if you haven't read the book or watched the movie, is very, very important to the book. Yes. Key to survival. So speaking of the book and the movie, Nancy, I know you're a really big fan of the book. I so am. what did you think of the comparison between the two? Um, I was pleasantly surprised. I thought the first part of the movie reflected the book pretty well. Yeah. And then there's actually kind of a bonus part in the movie that isn't in the book. But it was actually like kind of getting like a sequel ahead of time. Oh, yeah. So it was like a two for one deal. Um, <laughs> I can't say that I loved the sequel part, but I thought it was pretty good and it was well done. Yeah, it was definitely a surprise. Um, having just reread the book in preparation for seeing the mm -hmm. movie, I was like, what's all this stuff at the end? Wow, it just goes on and on. <laughs> like, it actually seemed like a longer movie yes. than it is, yes. I thought. I also felt like they added a lot of backstory to the different characters, mm -hmm. um, especially the kids. In the book, it's just a bunch of different fox babies, basically. Right. Um, and in the movie... Fantastic Mr. Fox has one son named Ash, and he's like a very developed character. And then um, his cousin comes to stay with the family, and he also has his own very distinct personality. Um, and I really liked their interactions with each other. It was like some jealousy, some loneliness, um, and it was just really funny the way that they interacted and talked when they were at Fox School and mm -hmm. all of that. What I also really loved about what they did with the characters in the movie is that all the animals have professions. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, Badger, who's just a badger in the book, 
um, is also a lawyer in the movie. So he's like wearing a three-piece suit and he's very official. And the rabbit is actually a cook, which I thought was really funny because when they rolled the credits, you find out it's voiced by Mario Batali, who's a famous real like chef. Yeah, and the funny thing about that, which I didn't notice till I saw a publicity photo later, is that they have the rabbit wearing orange clogs like for shoes, and that's <laughs> Mario Batali's real trademark look. Like those are the shoes that he wears in the kitchen. He wears clogs. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So it was really funny because um, apparently they paid attention to the smallest <laughs> details like this. So speaking of the visuals, I know I had mentioned to you before I was wary of the movie because when the posters first came out, I wasn't too happy with it mm -hmm. because um, my copy of Fantastic Mr. Fox when I was growing up was the one illustrated by Quentin Blake. So I had a totally different picture of it in my head. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually really liked it. Oh, good. Me too, actually. And it's interesting that you mentioned the illustrations by Quentin Blake because I read a little bit about this and it turns out that um, they had a very specific edition of the book in mind and it was a different one. So they oh, actually were looking okay. at different illustrations and basing the visuals off of that. And I think based on what I saw, it actually looked pretty close. Um, they actually said it was a more naturalistic approach, hmm. which I thought was kind of funny because in the end, it's totally not natural for foxes to wear suits, but <laughs> whatever, who am I to say? Well, I'm glad they went in that route because the movie looks amazing. It's yeah. done in stop motion, which um, for those of you who don't know, it's basically they put the scene together and they take a picture and they move a little tiny bit and they take a picture, they move a little bit more and they take a picture and basically do this for the entire movie. So it's sometimes up to like 16 photographs per second or like 32 photographs per second depending on what you're doing in the scene. So it takes a really, really long it's time. It's crazy. Yeah, it takes a really long time as we found out when we took a stab at stop motion ourselves. So thanks for listening to this Kizmo Momo, and we leave you with our stop motion tribute to Fantastic Mr. Fox. Mm -hmm.